guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. My name is about approach control services. In the previous video, I have also discussed about area control services. So you can go and check it out. The link is in the description box. Also, I have made other videos of air regulation topics. So you can also find them in my channel. And uh, it is especially very much helpful for the people who are appearing in the DGC examination for CPL. So without wasting much time, let's get started. Approach control service is provided by the approach control unit. These services include clearances for departing and approaching aircraft, what heading to follow, which runway to um, you know, land or take off from, other meteorological conditions in the vicinity of the aerodrome and what all factors would affect the takeoff and landing of the aircraft. So all these informations uh, are provided by the approach control unit. So first we'll be talking about departure. So there is something known as the standard instrument departure, short form SID. So these have been established in the aerodromes. So the normal departure of the aircraft is done with respect to the SIDs only. Okay, so we'll move on to the minimum separation between the departing aircraft. So if there are two departing aircraft, then what minimum separation have to be there? So first is one minute separation. There are also two minute and five minutes. So these are the three minimum separations. So one minute separation is provided if the tracks of the two aircrafts diverge by at least 45 degree as in the diagram. In second case, two minute separation is provided if the aircraft will be following the same track and the preceding aircraft will be 40 knots faster. And finally, it is five minute separation provided if the aircraft are have, are, will be flying in the same track and no separa vertical separation is provided. The next point is separation of departing aircraft from the arriving aircraft. So if there is an aircraft ready to depart, ready to take off and there is again another aircraft which wants to land at the same runway, then in that case what separation has to be maintained? Uh, firstly, in a complete instrument approach. So if the aircraft which is approaching uh, will be following the instrument approach, the complete instrument approach. In that case, the aircraft can depart in any direction until the arriving aircraft has started its procedure turn for final approach. And in case which is different, okay, in the in case where the direction of the departing aircraft is at least 45 degree from the reciprocal of the direction of the approach, uh, this means that if the aircraft suppose it is uh, landing from this direction then in from this line consider this line is the line in which the uh, aircraft is landing so within 45 degrees of the reciprocal of this track so within this track for example this is the landing aircraft and this is here 45 45 within this it should not be landing uh, i mean uh, taking off these areas it can take off so in this directions after arriving the air after the arriving aircraft has started its procedure turn provided that the takeoff is made at least three minutes before arriving aircraft is estimated to be over the beginning of the instrument runway so in this case three minute separation has to be maintained okay so we talk, uh, talked about two different points in case the landing aircraft is using an instrument approach the one in which the direction can be any in that case it can depart in any direction until the arriving aircraft has started its uh, procedure turn for the final approach and in second case except for the 45 degree from the reciprocal of the direction of the air approach they can be take, uh, taking off in any direction uh, provided that the air, uh, provided that the arriving aircraft is estimated to be over the beginning of the instrument runway, and three minutes separation should be there. Moving on to the straight and approach. In straight and approach, also there are two points where uh, when the aircraft can depart. 
so in any direction until 5 minutes before the arriving aircraft is over the beginning of the instrument runway and at least 45 degree from the reciprocal of the direction of the approach until 3 minutes before arriving the aircraft over the beginning of the instrument runway and before the arriving aircraft passes the fix on the approach track. So it is almost the same as the one which we talked about earlier just that any direction until 5 minutes before arriving the aircraft okay next is reduction in separation minima in the vicinity of the aerodrome may be reduced providing certain conditions so actually you already know that uh, separation is provided separation minima is al always there within the aircrafts flying in the airspace but uh, the red uh, in this case when we are landing or when we are taking off these minimas can be reduced uh, keeping some points in mind that adequate separation can be provided by the aerodrome controller when each aircraft is con continuously visible to the controller. First point that the controller can see the aircraft. Second point that uh, the two aircrafts are in visual contact to each other. They can see the other aircraft and the third point that the one aircraft is following the other craft, other aircraft and uh, he can properly see them and uh, they uh, like he will he'll be confirming that they he can maintain the separation in that case the reduc uh, reduction of the separation minima can be done okay next point is departing aircraft will be provided with all the meteorological information in takeoff and climb out area also, they will be provided operational status of visual and non-visual aids essential for takeoff. That is self-explanatory. So, moving on. Procedures for arriving aircraft. So, this is the one for the one uh, the aircraft which is landing. So, there is something known as STAR, Standard Instrument Arrivals. This is operated under normal conditions. And um, aircraft is informed of the type of approach it has to followed by the ATC unit and uh, what uh, runway is to be used obviously these are the most uh, important information that has to be delivered to the pilot who is approaching okay next comes the visual approach the visual approach uh, well we'll be first talking about uh, uh, the IFR flight who might want to switch to the visual approach in certain conditions in some parts of its flight uh, well in that case the controller needs to permit the IFR uh, flight to follow the visual approach and the controller shall not initiate a visual approach when there is a reason to believe that the flight can you know uh, cannot maintain the aerodrome uh, well minimas or they are not familiar with the aerodrome and the surrounding terrain then they won't be allowing the aircraft to fly in the visual conditions and uh, also that if there is uh, some prevailing tra traffic or the meteorological conditions then uh, just the instrument approach is allowed obviously to those flights which are equipped with the instrument uh, flight equipments and uh, and also that uh, it is only operated with within certain limits which we'll be talking about now so the ground visibility should be higher than the aerodrome operating minima of a non-precision approach or the RVR of 2800 meter for category A and B airspace, 3200 meter for category C air aeroplanes and 3600 meter for category D aeroplanes. I'm sorry if I said aerospace here, it's aeroplanes. Okay. So obviously if uh, there is a sep uh, there is a certain operating minima in the aerodrome so say it says that in category A and B you can fly only in the RV RVR conditions 2800 meter and uh, if the uh, visibility or the RVR condition which you have been informed at that moment it is 2500 meter then you cannot take off or you cannot land okay so that's what it is and also when the runway is in sight then only you have to you know the pilot can ask for visual reference 
and uh, coming to the next point that the runway having only a circling approach ground visibility should be greater than 5 kilometers okay this is should be it should be greater than 5 kilometers okay and then the obvious thing that uh, the meteorological condition should be preferable then only the visual approach can be carried on then coming to the instrument approach and this approach is made with the help of the instruments so the approach control unit shall specify the instrument approach procedure to be used by the arriving aircraft and the flight crew may request for alternative procedure also uh, if the circumstances permit then only it will be cleared accord uh, clear to do certain um, alternative approach which he asked for okay so clearances can be given to an ifr fly to fly in a vmc condition uh, under class d and e of airspace uh, in the daylight hours only so maintaining certain separation from the other aircrafts uh, in this case the clearance shall be given only for the specified portion of the flight uh, at or below 10000 feet during climb and descent subject to further restrictions that you have to maintain um, certain um, separation and all the other restrictions that have been prescribed by the regional air navigation agreements and also that uh, it has if they want to follow the vmc but uh, because of certain conditions or situations they are again not able to follow the vmc in that case they can be instructed to follow certain other alternative uh, procedure and that has to be followed by the flights and um, and then also if they are not able to you know commence with the vmc condition then they have to inform the atc before entering the imc and uh, shall pro shall uh, and then sh they shall proceed to uh, their alternative approach procedures okay so now we'll be talking about the expected approach time so it is determined for an arriving aircraft that will be subjected to a delay of 10 minutes or more so the expected approach time shall be transmitted to the aircraft as soon as practicable and uh, preferably not later than the commencement of its initial descent from the cruising level okay at that time they have to be given the expected approach time and uh, revised expected approach time shall be transmitted to the aircraft without delay whenever it differs from the previously transmitted one by 5 minutes by 5 minutes or more and finally an expected approach time have to be transmitted to the aircraft as soon as passive, possible sorry possible uh, when the aircraft is required to hold at a certain point for uh, at least 30 minutes in that case you have to tell okay the next time is onward clearance time so it is the time at which the aircraft can expect to leave a fix at which it is being held right this is the onward clearance time and uh, next we are coming to the information uh, for the arriving aircraft so there are certain information that has to be that have to be provided to them these are the type of approach and the runway in use meteorological conditions uh, and uh, current runway in use and the current uh, runway conditions changes in the operational status of visual and non visual aids essential for the approach or landing okay that all information has to be given to the aircraft uh, moving on to the point where uh, at the commencement of the final approach certain other informations are given to the aircrafts which we'll be discussing now so uh, mean headwind component if it changes by 10 knots or more that is known as a significant change in the meteorological condition that has to be reported headwind by 10 knots tailwind by 2 knots crosswind by 5 knots 
this is a serious change and also they have to tell uh, about the latest information of wind shear or turbulence in the final approach area or if there is a change in the current visibility rvr condition you know and also slant visual range that is also something that slant visual range is something else and the you know runway visual range is something else so these both are two different things and the visibility is also different for both of them so both of them if they differ by a certain amount uh, which might affect the landing safe landing of the aircraft or take off of the aircraft that has to be reported to the aircraft okay uh, finally, during the final approach, again, uh, we'll be discussing this, that uh, certain hazards, if uh, there are, uh, such as unauthorized traffic on the runway, and uh, again, significant change in the surface wind. If there is significant change in the runway surface conditions and RVR conditions and the status of the visual and non-visual aids, that changes. Uh, all those information has to be given to the aircraft by the control unit and uh, also it includes some weather conditions uh, such as turbulence or uh, you know wind shear uh, that is that comes under the surface winds only and CB well CB does not uh, like all of a sudden pops up in that area it builds up gradually but still uh, if any such weather condition which might affect the safety of the aircraft uh, comes up, then uh, that is being transmitted to the aircraft. This was the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a big fat thumbs up if you like it and also drop a comment telling me how do you like it. Also, if you have any other suggestions or any doubts, do let me know in the comment section below and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.